A refusal which critics say flies in the face of his pledge to restore America's moral standing. But Barack Obama was adamant. He wants Bush-era photos of detainee abuse by U.S. troops kept under lock and key. The publication of these photos would not add any additional benefit to our understanding of what was carried out in the past by a small number of individuals. In fact, the most direct consequence of releasing them, I believe, would be to further inflame anti-American opinion and to put our troops in greater danger. Human rights groups say Obama is helping to cover up the crimes of his predecessor. The decision adds to their frustration at the Justice Department's failure to open criminal investigations into torture under the previous administration. The Bush team's tactics in the war on terror have been back in the spotlight since memos authorizing so-called enhanced interrogation techniques were released in April. His identity hidden at a Senate hearing, a former FBI official who interrogated al-Qaeda's Abu Zubaydah ridiculed the effectiveness of such methods. These techniques, from an operational perspective, are slow, ineffective, unreliable, and harmful to our efforts to defeat al-Qaeda. The U.S. is under pressure in Afghanistan, and Obama could do without the ongoing debate. But with the abuse photos controversy set for a possible Supreme Court ruling, and torture rarely out of the headlines, drawing a line under Bush's legacy is proving difficult. Mr. Chairman, uh, the former the FBI agent tried to protect his identity and his life by testifying behind a screen. He's convinced interrogation tactics such as waterboarding and sleep deprivation shouldn't be used. These techniques, from an operational perspective, are slow, ineffective, unreliable, and harmful to our efforts to defeat al-Qaeda. Ali Soufan says he used non-threatening methods to get valuable information from this alleged al-Qaeda operative. The FBI agent maintains Abu Zubaydah then stopped talking when the CIA took over the interrogation and waterboarded the prisoner on more than 80 occasions. Al-Qaeda are trained to resist torture. As shocking as these techniques are to us, their training prepares them for much worse. The torture that they would receive if caught by dictatorships, for example. The truth of our country's descent into torture is not precious, it is noxious, it is sordid. Some of the worst excesses occurred in Iraq's notorious Abu Ghraib prison. Barack Obama said he'd release hundreds of new photos showing prisoners being abused, but he's abruptly changed his mind. The most direct consequence of releasing them, I believe, would be to further inflame anti-American opinion and to put our troops in greater danger. It's a dramatic turnaround for a president who promised a more transparent administration. Barack Obama's now in an unusual and probably uncomfortable position. He's being praised by Republicans, but condemned by civil liberties groups. Give me the phone. <laughs> Reporters assailed the president's press secretary, and when a mobile phone rang, he welcomed the interruption. <laughs> Mark Simpkin, ABC News, Washington.